I got you two in here. I think it, people will be fascinated by this conversation. And let's take it, you know, a little bit deeper. We've got a big chunk of time here, plenty of uh, ample minutes to share stories. Damon, you were with Tom Brady for how many years? Three. Won two Super Bowls with him. First two. You've stayed in touch with him for many years afterwards, right? Yeah. I mean, not like you're the best of buddies, but you certainly are friendly, sure. stay in touch, and, and everything else. KJ, you were with Russell Wilson how many years? Nine years. Nine years. Uh, won a Super Bowl. Went mm-hmm. to two Super Bowls with him. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady had an ability from afar, Damon, and you could tell me otherwise. You can you could spin it whatever way you want. But from afar, he had the ability to have a connective tissue even through all of his stardom. That's what I call it. Just a connective tissue. You just relate. You you can get on anybody's level, right? When someone walks in, is it true that he would introduce himself? Hey, I'm Tom. Absolutely. Just one of the guys. And Bill Belichick would always remind him of that. You know, <laughs> hey, you're one. He, he'd embarrass him in front of the team room 15 years into his career. Would he really? Oh, yeah. Maybe How? ask him a question. Just, I think, to show the rest of the room. Yeah. It was more of like a I don't, Tom. You know, I'm gonna say a little. So probably let him know at that point. I don't right. know. But it was just like, hey, you're like cool. what? What would yeah. be a? Do you remember that? Like what? How would he do that? Oh, you'd hear stories about this. Obviously, I was with him in the beginning, right. so he was really hard on him. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, you know, he wasn't Tom Brady, even after the first Super Bowl. I mean, a lot of those games we won with the great defense and mm-hmm. some special teams and some good fortune. But uh, in the end, you know, I, I. Even going around, going back during that reunion 15 years later, it's hard to believe that Tom and Bill were still doing this thing that I did many, many moons ago. Yeah. But um, they, it was just it was just ball. It was a coach and quarterback relationship. But he was just one of the guys. And no doubt, I think that was a challenge. I, KJ, I'd love to ask you this question. Mm-hmm. But certainly as I got older in the league, and you're in your mid-30s, and these kids coming in are 21, 22 years old, and, hey, I had your card when I was a little guy. <laughs> you know, you were a great – like, it's, it's hard to sometimes connect with those guys. But Brady made an effort and knew that it was about those relationships – it was go drinking beers with your old linemen. It mm-hmm. was having some guys over at the crib, you know, bye week. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, it, it truly is all about those relationships. And he needed those guys, his teammates, to be great. Yep, and I, I knew when I was getting older, when they started calling me Unk. <laughs> hey, what up, Unk? What up, Unk? Hey, what up, Unk? I'm like, who are you calling Unk? I'm only in my sixth year in the NFL. Don't call me Unk. But, um, but you know, if I'm going to do be, that, if I'm going to be Unk, then you know what? I'm going to be your uncle. I'm going to be that guy that's going to shoot the crap with you. I'm going to take you under my wing, bring you along. And um, that's how I operated. And at the end of the day, Tom Brady, I had nothing but great stuff about him. Like one, of, There's nothing like being one of the guys. Correct. One of the guys. I can go hang with the o lineman, go get a beer with the DBs. We yeah. can go, go to the club together, yeah. have a linebacker trip. Deshaun Shedd came with us to Montana. And so, yeah. so it's all about having fun with the fellas. Did yeah. Russell ever connect? Like early on, did he aim to ever connect, or was it just a different, different deal? Early on, yes. Early on, very approachable, was, you know, energetic, engaging, fun, cool. Like, okay, this guy's chill. Mm-hmm. And um, time went on. And, um, okay, you, you saw it. You saw it. You saw the change. You saw the, I don't use the word disconnect, but you saw him grow and just start to get other interests, um, became this big-time brand. And when you, bec- when you separate yourself, when you're not approachable in the locker room, that's just that's bad business. That's bad ball. When you're not one of the guys, mm-hmm. you are a big time superstar, great. Mm-hmm. But when you're there in those trenches in that locker room on game day, you're, you're no, no one cares about that. No one cares about any of that. And so, um, to hear what Marshawn said about him, yeah. it hurt. That hurt me. Well, let's play a little bit. I just, sometimes I think I assume everybody has heard this, Damon. I don't know if you even heard any of this last week. Marshawn was on with Shannon Sharp. I think Sharp was feeding him Hennessy or whiskey or something. Cognac. Think, yeah, he, <laughs> cognac. Is that what it was? The cognac. Yeah, they were fireside and on the couch, and you know, Sharp's doing all he can to probably get Marshawn just liquored up and hammered. <laughs> a little sheesh good. Yeah, sheesh good. Yep. True, sir. <laughs> little, little filter down, and uh, he, he said that. <laughs> Try to get Russell's number to talk to him. This was after the Tennessee Titans game. I don't know if you even remember that one, KJ, but the plan going in mm-hmm. was that Russell was going to have a field day. We're going to throw it all over the yard the way Tennessee plays, our man to man team, and all this pressure. They're going to play to stop the run. And this was going to be Russ's day to just pad some stats and get some numbers and blah, 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 blah and get in the MVP race. Well, it didn't happen. And instead, Marshawn ran for like a buck 50 and had himself a day. And mm-hmm. Marshawn wanted to get in touch with Russell. And you think, like, well, how hard is that? Like get in touch with you see him every day. You see him every day. Like get get in touch with him. Well, he didn't have his number. 
Mm -hmm. had to go through the equipment staff to get Russ's number. And so he calls Russ, leaves him a message, and Russ calls back, and Marshawn didn't answer because from a block number. And then the story went a little <laughs> further. More, you got a, got a little bit of that snippet here from Marshawn with Mr. Sharp. Oh, this is me. I'm a teammate. Like, man, I'm calling you. I'm telling you straight up. Like, I'm calling you on some some real. Yeah, I mean, I think this one of the. I think this is the first time that I actually like, you know, tried to have a conversation with. But so I'm like, yeah, you feel me? I know you didn't have a game that you wanted to have. I'm like, but look, check it out. That's what I'm here for. And uh, you know what I mean? And if you know the shoe on the other foot. I expect for it to be the same way. Right. We got to, you know what I mean? I'm here for you. You here for me. You feel me? You let me know. And we go like, and his response to me kind of like was like, the f So I told him again, like, nah, bro, like, you know, I'm letting you know, like, man, I'm here for you. Like, we going to rock. You, you know what I mean? And his response was the same. So I kind of So what exactly was his response? What did he say? We ain't going to get all that, man. You feel me? It was man? bad, huh? I mean, yeah, considering, you know... That you, you know, reached out. That we on the same team going for the same goal, and, you know what I mean, this was how you chose to respond to me. It was more so like, maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. Listen, bro. So many people have said what they've said about Russ. You mm -hmm. got the Sherms of the world. I, mm -hmm. I've said what I've said. You got mm -hmm. Doug. Like, everyone has said their stuff. When it came from Marshawn Lynch's mouth, his words, his his presence, that's a stamp. Mm -hmm. He's he, he's a stamp. And um, to hear Marshawn go into that much depth was first of all surprising. But you could tell, like, dang, like, bro, what? Private number, um, not listening, not connecting. Like, how can I be on the same football mm -hmm. field with you and we're not connecting? Mm -hmm. That was absolutely bizarre to me. And my question to Russ is, why? Right. Why? Um, are, is is it? I don't know. I'm getting some social anxiety. Is it you don't feel like you feel like you're above people? Like like I don't know what it is. But um, you think it was just a constant? I'm fighting against the world. Like I am the five ten quarterback, right? I've had teammates call me not black enough. I'm 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 breaking through barriers. I'm not out partying with Marshawn. I don't, you know, I, I live a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like he just maybe felt like he's just swimming upstream against everything? One million percent. I wholeheartedly agree with that. When Russ started to grow, I've said this before, the way that Coach Carroll, um, I'm gonna use the word coddled, but defended Russ. Mm -hmm. The way that Coach Carroll defended Russ, that created natural resentment. I've said that a million times, and I will stand on that to my last day. He created resentment when it came to him. And so when the media does praise him, and you got other guys saying, no, you're not the one. It is us. Who are you? That creates a natural wall. Yeah. 100%. That creates a natural wall when you feel like your teammates don't have your back. Yep. 100%. And so if I'm going to carry myself like, if you don't rock with me, if you don't think that I'm good, to hell with you then. Right. I, I could I can I could be that guy too. So in his defense, yeah. maybe that is his mindset. Would we be talking about this today if the Seahawks won that second Super Bowl? Let me tell you this, Damon. I can't believe you just asked me that. Seriously, you can't ask him that, Damon. No, 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 no. no, no I'm no, sorry. No, no, I mean, we've all no, had no, tough no, losses. You say that no, no. to dad yesterday and to KJ today. Seriously. No, no, <laughs> back no. back no. days. No, but the reality is that's where this all I think starts. And listen, listen, Damon. I, I said that because I can't believe you asked me that because I had a conversation. I really don't want to let too many private conversations out, but I had a conversation with someone really tight, and he said that same exact thing. Yeah. He said this would never happen if we would have won that Super Bowl. I, Damon, I, 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 I kid you not. He said this would have never happened if we would have won that, sec, that second Super Bowl. He was like, everyone hated me. Everyone looked at me crazy. Um, they. And they really pointed the finger at me like I was the reason. Mm -hmm. he, I, he didn't make the call. Yeah. He didn't make the call. He didn't He didn't choose to throw it a slant across the middle when he should have went to the outside or handed the ball off. Yeah. And he said that's when the stuff – I can't believe him. But he said that's, that's when the stuff really started to pile on. Yeah. And so if we would have won it, who knows where we would be right now. Oh. Dang, you brought it out of yeah. me, Dad. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I didn't want to go there. Yes. I know. I, I know. But, but no, Rock that's brought the, it out in all of us but, having this oh, conversation. That's the, that's, yeah. that's the truth, though. It's like, yeah. 
It's, it's a lot of quarterbacks win one Super Bowl. You went yeah. back to back. Who knows if you win a third? Like it's, it, 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 a lot of that stuff just kind of takes care. Of, eh, okay, you want to be? Like, oh, it was winning. so. You it was I mean? so many recipes that went into this. Sure. So many sure. recipes. Sure. sure. Golden boy, like you said, five ten. I'm always fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, get the, get the starting spot. I throw five interceptions mm-hmm. in the NFC Championship. Yeah. I'm the one that gets interviewed. Hold up, we held them to <laughs> field goals. Why aren't we the ones getting interviewed? Right. I, I, I'm the one that didn't make the check, and it's yeah. just so many things. Mm, now, works. let me say this. Brock, he needs to take full responsibility as well. Yep. I said what I said when, when Golden Tate came on. Like, it's, it's, he needs to make some phone calls. Stuff need, He needs to make amends with a lot of people. Yep. Because for you to go through 10 years in these organizations and to have the relationships that you have or the lack of relationship that you have with these guys is embarrassing. It's not good enough. Well, and it's really hard what's happening in Denver, too. I mean, last year was a laughing stock. Last year was just all of these things. Like, what, your high knees on the plane? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, it was, <laughs> right? I mean, last year was bad, bad. And then this year, the play on the field's a little better, but they're one and four, right? And now Sean Payton ain't going to deal with it. And he's mm-hmm. dog cussing him as he fumbled to lose the game, unfortunately. And <sighs> how did it happen so quickly, Brock? Yep. How do you go from let Russ cook, um, always winning 10, 11 games? to just a sh- sharp decline. It wasn't a slow decline, Damon. Yeah. It was a sure. straight downhill. Yep. And I don't have the answer to how it happened that quickly. Mm-hmm. That quickly. Do you have any idea how it just happened? Well, father in time a, is undefeated. I mean, yeah. I can remember just watching so many games where in the fourth quarter, watching him run around and make plays and, and you know, win football, very close football games. And that did. It just kind of faded kind of toward the end there. He he wasn't as elusive. He'd had a couple injuries. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, the defense, you know, it was there. The running game wasn't quite the same, you know, kind mm-hmm. of reaching for guys there. But this is the ultimate team sport, KJ. I think it's what makes it so much fun for all of us to sit and dissect and try to figure <laughs> out and try to understand those answers. Yeah. But with the great teams, it, it, it it's more than just one player. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it, it is hard to see his fall. Hard yep. to see his fall. And, and all I want for Russ is, when it's all said and done, to be welcomed back here with open arms. Yeah. Welcome back here with love. With- and I think he will. Time heals a lot of these things. Okay. And if he does the right thing with the relationships with his former teammates is where it starts, then the fans will definitely welcome I think welcome you got to reach a day. valley, though, you know, and he is in yeah. the yeah. deepest, darkest valley of his life. Last year mm-hmm. was, and then this year continues to be, that you just finally realize that it is about the people. Yeah. <laughs> I asked Damon earlier at the start of the show, KJ, how teams go from good to great. Mm-hmm. Right? The, the Huskies are a really good team. The Mariners have been a good team. Um, you know, there's there's good teams. Seahawks have been yeah. good the last three, four years. They've yeah. not been great. How do they go from good to great? Yeah. And his answer is, it's all about the people. Yep. It's all about the relationships. Yep. And and that that Virginia Mason Athletic um, Center, what does the C stand for? Yep. Virginia Mason you got Athletic it. Center. Um, in that building, yeah. there's some people that, I'm going to say kiss the ring. Like, there's some godfathers in that building. If you want to make good graces with people, you got to go to those people that, the relationships weren't quite tight with yeah. and be like, hey, you know, yeah. let, let's talk it out. Let's just talk it out. Yeah. Let's just talk it out. And when it's all said and done, when he does mm-hmm. get done in Denver, he needs to be back here in some form or fashion and be in the ring of honor and all that cool stuff. Yeah. Like you said, with the fellas, that's where it starts. That's where it yep. starts. That's where it starts. You know, okay. one awesome thing, Rock, I'd love to add here because yeah. I think it's a, a real positive spin is, you know, the defense really was a struggle last year. Mm-hmm. And bringing one guy back, like you're talking about, right? I mean, what has Bobby met coming back? You know, this defense playing the way it is now, three and one start. Bobby Wagner, another Husky, mm-hmm. Seahawk legend like yourself. Sorry, I do a lot of Husky stuff. Yeah. But anyway, all that being said, what has Bobby Wagner met coming back and then all this this turnaround with the defense? What part play part is he playing? And you could just see when he left, it's like we talked about this. There's nothing like a presence. On the football field, there's nothing like that guy, that Ray Lewis, that Brian Urkel, like that Bobby Wagner. Like when he's in this building, when he's in, in this locker room, on the football field, everything will be okay. There's no problem too big to solve mm-hmm. when a Bobby Wagner is on the football field and on your football team. And so when he left, went to the Rams, you saw how the Seahawks played. He comes back, you see how the Seahawks are playing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. And just seeing the fans. When they cheered his name um, in that, in that um, starting lineup, in that introduction, in a preseason game, I was next to Bobby. I was like, 
Well, did you hear that? Like, bro, they you are loved. Yeah. You are loved in this city. Well, so are you. Yes. Yes. KJ I'm, all day. Is that what that sweatshirt is? Yeah. Uh, KJ yeah all day? You notice that? Oh, what is it? <laughs>